Uh, it has been said, everything that has been said today is important. I buy into 99.9% .9 of all that has been said. But I want to add certain things, so I want to just give you a package uh, that you can run with even this morning. And I think that it is important. All right, we don't look for Twitter and Instagram to give us truth to live with because we are believers. We look into scriptures so that we can find biblical truth uh, that can set us free and that can give us light uh, that is important for our living. So number one, write this down. I'm speaking to you on scriptural truth about friendship. Scriptural truth about friendship. I've found in scripture certain truths. And I just want to run it by you and I want you to write them down. Number one, God delights in bringing us into divine kingdom connection. God delights in bringing us into divine kingdom connection. First Samuel chapter 18, 3 to 4. Scripture says that Jonathan and David made a covenant. Why? Because Jonathan loved David as his own soul. He loved him. There are people that will be attracted to you. It's kingdom connection. There is attraction that is needed before friendship can be built. God will meet their soul with yours and you will be able to go forward. He gave Paul a dear friend by the name of Luke. That's Colossians chapter 4 verse 14. Bible says, Paul was right, he said, greet the beloved Luke. He was not going to be able to do much if not for him. So you will need friends in your life. It's called divine connection. I, there are people I have in my life. They didn't come in because of my look. They came in by divine connection. There are friends you are sitting by today. You don't understand their values, but they are divine connection. They may not look like it today, but many years from now, you will begin to see the result even of that friendship. Hallelujah. Never on the value, the value of divine connection and then number two friends can make or mar you therefore choose your friends carefully that's number two principle i found in scriptures uh, friends can make or mar you therefore choose your friends carefully carefully david attained destiny because of jonathan if Jonathan was not his friend, Saul would probably have killed him. But he attained destiny because of him. Bible says concerning a man who knew the word of God and was vast by the name of Apollos. But scripture says he only understood even the revelation of John. And the Bible says Aquila and Priscilla, they called him and they taught him the ways of God. So they made him better. Friendship will make you better. There are friends who will make you better. And there are also persons that if you meet uh, and you become friends with them, your life will begin to go down. Someone listening to me, they can mar you. They can destroy you. A vivid example. And I tell folks that because your dad is a wise person does not mean you are going to be wise. A vivid example in scripture is the name Rehoboam. Bible says he inherited 12 nations that made all the kingdom of Israel. But because of the counsel of his friends, uh, he lost it. And he lost it and they became only two. So there are people you can have 10 million in your account. By working with them, your money can be, you can become poor. I met someone and he said, I met some friends. He said, I should have built my house. I should have built my house. I should have my car now. He said, but hold the house. They are here. And he, I point at his stomach. His belly has become rotunda. He said, I drink, I drink, I drink, I drink. And then see all kinds of drink. All the money for the houses, they are here. What happened? He met a bad company. May you never meet a bad company. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26, says to us that be careful how you choose your friend. The righteous chooses their friends carefully. Carefully. People can say, I'm your friend. It does not mean you are their friend. Are you listening to that? Uh, it takes two to tango. Some people come to me and say, ah, it's my friend. I look at them and I'm like, are you kidding you are not even an acquaintance. I'm not fighting them, but it's the truth. Listen, don't because this is a very nice generation. Be nice with your destiny. All right? Like Pastor Tony says, if you look at their life and it's not going to help you, man of God, move on. Move on. There are people I block for my sanity. Are you listening to me? There are people I block for my sanity. Everybody should be careful about their mental health. If somebody is affecting you mentally, by God and by every means with tongues in your mouth. Move on. Kill a ball, obey satire. Move on. Are you listening? No apologies. It's your destiny. I tell folks, if you die here, you die once. It's an Hollywood movie that somebody dies now and then you see him in another movie. 
In real life, you die, you are gone. Listen to that. That's number two. Number three, one of life's learning platforms and contacts are friends. One of life's learning platforms and contacts are friends. There is a truth in the adage that says, show me your friend and I'll tell you the kind of person that you are. We sometimes learn more from friends than we learn in our home, that we learn in our church, that we learn even when our parents are teaching us. Therefore, you must be careful who your friends are. I love Proverbs 22. If you can be on the screen very quickly, I would love to read it. Proverbs 22, and then we'll read 24 to 25. The Bible says, make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man do not go. And verse 25, he said, lest you learn his ways, and act a snare, and have a snare for your soul. It therefore means that by friendship you can become angry. Do you understand? When you see the way someone always reacts, you also learn it. And then you become a furious person. You become a furious man. It's, sorry, apologies to the bands. But you know, you just become very furious. And what happened, you learned it. Things, character can be learned. Bible says, do not be friend with an angry man. There are people who never laugh. There are people when you see them, you are afraid to greet them. Because you think that they are angry. They are permanently on a high. Permanently angry. What's going on? Nothing. 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 And then before you know it, you think it is cool to also be like that. Why? Because you learn from friends. People learn how to ask ladies out because of friendship. People learn how to sleep around by friendship. People learn how to be hippie by friends. You must be careful the kind of association you are getting into. Is someone listening to that? All right, Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. It says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good manners. You might come from a good home. When you enter certain friendship, I remember my story. I went to Loyola College, good boy, son of a pastor. And then I met these guys. And then when we enter school like this, Loyola College, uh, Ibadan, immediately we enter like this. 9 a.m. we're out. We jump the fence out. And then I look back now and I said, I, I was totally possessed. We will go and play snookers. We will go and play tennis. That was the days of PlayStation 1. We will start PlayStation in the morning. And we will finish a whole season by evening. And we will be going home. How did I learn that friendship? Don't be afraid to let people go. Number four. The Bible, what I discovered again. Whoever you are. Be deliberate and intentional about making friends. Don't let anybody tell you you don't need people in your life. It's one of the deception of a generation, of the devil to a generation. You will always need people. Uh, I think MG said it while he was speaking, a favorite one of the favorite um, scriptures of Reverend George, and he says very simply that men are God's method. Listen, you will need men. You will need men. I love Luke 16 and verse 9. Jesus said, make for your friend, make for yourself, uh, by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an eternal home. He said, make for yourself, friends, uh, with money. That means because you have money, people will be attracted to you. He said, make for yourself, friends. He said, because when you come to your time of lack, people will now be there for you. It's called investment. Uh, some people are beautiful. Use that beauty to find friends. I'm not saying sleep around. Some people can speak. Some people have charisma. Whatever you have. Jesus was sharing a principle here. He said, whatever you have, he said, use it for yourself. Make sure it's a resource you are using. Be intentional about it so that when you need help, people will be able to help you. I know things money cannot do. But because you are nice with money with people, they will go and knock on doors for you. Your driver will knock on doors. Uh, doors you cannot open. They will tell you, ah, that, the, that disease, uh, I don't know whether you can take this agbo. It will help you. And then you take the agbo and you are fine. Now, that's what you have been suffering from. But because you are nice, uh, a door opens to you. A door opens to you. All right? Number five, friends are links and bridges to spiritual blessings. Friends are links and bridges to spiritual blessings write that down please uh, friends are links to spiritual blessings uh, you can be connected with blessings because of who you know laban was blessed because of jacob he said it very simply in genesis 30 and verse 27 he said i have learned by experience don't let that word deceive you he actually was saying i have learned by definition i have gone to certain people and they have told me that my blessing is because of you there are people that enters your life and brings an atmosphere of blessing into your life. 
and you are going to be blessed because of them. And there are people that will come to your life and will ruin you. Your robust who are not joking. They understand the spiritual law. Therefore, when you want to marry those days, many years ago, they will take that name and that person and go to some herbalist and say, Eba wa Help us look at his destiny. If it's somebody who will make it, they understand the spiritual law. When you get involved with certain people, your life will go down. But when you also get involved with certain people, your life will go up. Laban discovered a blessing. And in searching for what has happened to him, he discovered that the blessing was because of Jacob. Look into your life. Certain people are in your life and it's because of them that your life began to go upward. It's because you came to Rema Chapel. It's because the grace of this house worked for you. That's when you became relevant. You knew you had no direction. But a grace came. Not because Reverend George came, but a grace that founded the house. The grace of the calling. It came into place and your life started working. Now you can become like, oh, I know the word. You didn't know any word that time. Let's stick with God works. Let's stick with relationships. It disconnects will lead to pain. Psalms 1, and then you read the first two verses. He said for it he speaks in and he says that uh, he, do not dwell in the council of the ungodly, do not sit in the seat of scorners. Uh, when people scorn, they actually destroy themselves and they do not know. All right, number six. I give you two uh, six and seven, and then we are done. Number six, the secret to lasting friendship is kindness and forgiveness. Don't let anybody deceive you. I hope you got that. The secret to lasting friendship. Is kindness and forgiveness. If you see people who have been friends for 40 years, that, those are people who are forgiving each other for 40 years. Those are people who have been kind to each other for 40 years. Don't be deceived. There are no perfect human beings. If you block people on the flimsy basis that he did not respond to you well, you are crazy. Something is wrong with you. Because you need to learn to grow up, mature up, so that you can enter into destiny relationships. There are people who greet you and then you are not answering because you are looking at them that they are nothing. They are going to be instrumental in your life. I love when Pastor Ian says it's not blocking physically. Many of us block people in our mind. We just switch them off. Why? Because you greeted and they didn't answer. That person was thinking about paying school fees. You say he didn't answer. You are the least of his trouble. Are you listening to me? You say he didn't greet him. Someone looked that over. How would you not greet me? That person has a mother that is sick and you are thinking he's thinking about you. You see, we need to learn to give excuses for people. Scripture says uh, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7, he said, I have loved you and I have chosen you. He said, not because you are the most numerable of people. He said, because I have loved you. Bible says, Jacob, have I loved this or have I hated? What do you see in the life of, uh, of Jacob? A man who is fault. But God kept, kept on giving excuses for him. Every time, he kept giving him excuses. Give food to your brother. The man said, no. Sell it to me. God said, no. It was the brother that despised the bad right. It was that not the wicked person. God was giving excuses. To have friendship in this life, I am telling you, take it to the bank. You have to learn to forgive people. You need to learn to forgive people. You need to learn to let go. You need to learn to be kind. Be realistic about your expectations on people. Proverbs 17 and verse 9. Be careful. Let your expectation be right. He who covers transgression seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separate friends. You don't have to tell me if it's your friend. You have to tell me, for me. You are a useless person. Because the day he gave you money, you didn't tell me. The day you both sat down and were talking about me, you didn't tell me. But the day he spoke about you in a wrong way, you are telling me, what were you doing when they are talking about me? You kept quiet. You see, when we have this simple wisdom, we'll understand that people who come to you with a matter, they are separating you from that person. They don't love you. Because when people talk bad about you, the other party is not keeping quiet. If he's keeping quiet the second time, they will not come and tell him again. He also gave his own contribution. He was a constituency, an assembly. Uh, but when you're a king, uh, uh, you want to sort it, you want to sort it. Uh, you want to sort it. Uh, you want to sort He's a mad person. Uh, you will now come and edit that person away and come and tell your own hello. You see, if you understand these things, you will never lose friends. No man is perfect. Your husbands are not perfect. Your wives are not perfect. Marriages that have lasted, ask Daddy James, for more than 50 years, forgiveness. 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 Not blocking. Forgiveness. 
That's why our generation, we continually to have divorce. Why? Because you want to just move out. You don't have to You see, you don't have to marry people like that. Just walk away. When a woman in dating is mentioning, I will leave the house. Don't wait to the marriage. You leave her before she comes to the house. And if the man is saying the same thing, leave him. And then finally, so that we can pray. God desires to be friends with us. He's calling us into intimacy. Can I have John 15, 12 to 15? John 15, 12 to 15. He's calling us to intimacy. Bible says, this is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Did you say that you beef one another? Say that you love one another. That I have loved you. Someone wore a very good suit. Sir. But our Kingsley here dresses so well. Amazing. You see, don't, don't. He dresses well. Agree. Leave him. Don't let envy come in. Somebody is finer than you. Leave it. He's finer. Don't you see, there are things that causes envy in church and makes us hate each other because we are not working in reality. Pastor Tony is a lawyer. Do you understand? Is the way he is. Don't disturb yourself. Now so you go be. Now so you be. Leave him like that. You see, there are things you have to understand about people and you stop deceiving yourself. Oh, the way eh, she's light. She always likes to dress somewhere. If you also have that yellow cloth, you will wear it. Pray that God bless you that way. It's not Ilara. God will do your own. But you see, when we stop doing these things, our blessings will come. Are you listening to me? Our blessings will come. Our blessings will come. I tell people when someone buys a car, go and ask. I go inside the car and I start the car and I drive it. It is not them, it's my car. No, my friend bought a car. If my friend bought a car and we are in the same atmosphere, it means God is in the neighborhood. If God can do it for him, it's coming on my own case. So, so disturbing yourself. Get that reality right. We are different. My wife likes chocolate. I don't hate it. It doesn't mean I hate her. Go like it, none. If they sing in church and they are singing Calypso, if you don't like it, leave it. Some people like it, they are dancing. Don't deceive yourself. Are you listening to me? Are you getting this? And then finally, God desires that you be his friend. God desires that we'll be his friend. The scripture makes it very clear. And he said, I have loved you. Verse, give me verse 13 now. He said, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. That means Jesus is the greatest lover. Don't deceive yourself. Some people will not die for each other. Husbands will not die for wife. If they will, they would have donated the kidney when the kidney failed. Say, my Lord, I told you I want more. Verse 14. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you. That's verse 14. All right. And then he said, no longer do I call you servants. Some religions say, our near Lord. Buddha says that you are not even God. The heart you should escape from the heart. Hindu says, there is nothing good about man. And therefore God, who is an abstract being, cannot have communion or communication with anything on heart. That's what Buddha says. That's what Hinduism says. But your God, your creator, he says, I do no longer call you servants. I don't call you slaves. You have a right in the house. But much more than right, you have friends with me. I want to enter into what is called koinonia and intimacy with you. I desire that you be my friend. I desire that you be close to me. I desire that when you wake up early in the morning, I'm the first guy you speak to. I'm the first being you speak to. I desire that every day, whatever you do, you remember you have not spoken to me. I desire that I'm not someone you just pray to. I'm someone you walk with. Sir. I'm someone who is by your side. I'm someone who you can walk and move and traverse life together. I'm someone that you can call a friend. And I love that song. Can you rise on your feet? What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, hey, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Stop it, stop it. Listen, that song says, What a friend. There are things you can't tell any man. I don't know whether you know. If you just tell it to your friend, that guy is going to use it against you 10 years from now. They say, ah, ah. Fornicator, nee. Increase, Lord, increase, nee. He will tell you. There are deep pains. I don't know whether real people came to church this morning. But there are real pains you can't even tell your husband. There are real pains you can't tell your wife. There are real pains that you can't tell your children. Why? Because they can't understand it. When you tell a friend, you tell others. But Bible says, what a friend I, Fisayu Adeni, have in Jesus. What a friend 
Timothy has in Jesus. What a friend uh, that James has in Jesus. What a friend uh, Pastor Tony has in Jesus. What a friend uh, Ovai has in Jesus. What a friend uh, he doesn't talk about me to Ovai. He's not a troublemaker. He's not an elegant way where he doesn't do that. He only speaks my matter to me. We are going to sing that song and I want to sing it with revelation in your heart. If you have a relationship with God tonight, uh, this morning, uh, sing that song with revelation in your mind. Uh, can we go again? Can we go again? Uh, friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer Too bad. 